Good morning, guys. So if you haven't done so, you can uh, submit your homework one to the table right here. Um, and also, now you submitted your homework one, I also posted homework two. But it's due in two weeks. Okay. Um, so today we'll finish chapter three, which means something might happen on Monday. Okay, you know what happens every time after a chapter is finished. Um, what else? I Oh, how's the project going? Going well? Um, I have a couple of things to add about the project, so I just added two drop boxes. Um, so remember for the project report, you will submit both in hard copy and electronically. So for the electronic version, submit it to the drop box right here and you want to submit it before the presentation started. And for the presentation slides, you might want to be careful because you want to submit it in the night before. So, are there any teams that plan to do it not in PowerPoint? Like, if you decide you're not going to do PowerPoint, let me know. But if you're going to do PowerPoint, um, submit it the midnight before the presentation, so I'll compile them all. So we save time. So all of the slides will be just in one file. Okay. I think that's it for a couple of announcements. So for the SQL programming last time, everyone got, like, everyone are on the same page? Or you're kind of falling behind? For whatever that we did last time, do everyone have it? Do you have your laptop today? So I think this is where we were last time, right? This is where we finished. And last time, if you recall, we created two tables. One is the student's table and one is the enrolled table. And for the enroll table last time, the version we had, we have not yet specified any foreign key. Okay? So if you were following last time, I think we created on, until this part, and I kind of just talked through here, and we have not yet uh, put on the foreign key. And last time, remember, whenever I made a mistake, I just dropped the whole table, and <laughs> you guys made it. Um, so today, I will show you how we can add some constraints. Okay, so we don't have to actually delete the whole table. We just have to do a couple of uh, modifications. And I think, um, yeah, a few things. Last time I didn't put the parenthesis SID behind the student's table, and make sure you do that, just a good practice, so you know which primary key it's referring to. Um, and don't forget for cascade, what it means in no action, what it means. So before we go into some practices, some exercises, I want to show you a couple of commands that might be useful. Uh, you don't have to remember them, just have to refer to them when you want to use them. Um, if you remember last time we talked about the engines, okay, and I said um, if you're using the CSE, MySQL, um, the default engine actually won't allow you to have the foreign key functionality, and that's kind of weird if we're, we are learning relational model. So don't forget that you actually set the engine to this, this engine, okay? And last time, we did it while we were creating the table, but actually you can change it after you created the table. And also, um, I'll show you later, you can change the default setting as well. And here is how you will change, uh, how you will add the constraints for foreign key. So um, if it were last time, I would just I'll drop the whole table and we retype everything again. So these are the three commands that you will follow. Um, if you directly try the one in the middle, that's like the main part for um, modif modifying the foreign key, it, will, it won't work because there's a lock locking it. So you want to set it, like disable it first, and then you can do that. Um, another thing is, remember when we want to see how, uh, what's the schema for the table we use describe, right? But um, if you use describe, it actually won't show you any kind of foreign key that you just set. So if you do show create table and follow by the table name, then you can see how the table is defined, including the foreign key. So I'll show you. Let's say we 
just enter, what will be the first thing you do? Before we do anything. Remember? Show the elevators. Show the elevators, right? And this will show you the databases that are available. So what should I do next if I want to choose one to use? Use. Yeah, you do use. And I think Barbara created the database for you uh, with your own account name. Okay, so you used the database, now the database has changed. So what else can we do from after we enter the database? Mm -hmm. You can show the tables. You were, you were with me last time, now we should have two tables, right? One is enrolled and one is students. All right, so let's take a look at the enrolled students. We won't do anything on the uh, enrolled table. We won't do anything on the student table today. So for enrolled, um, for showing the table, there are a couple of things you can do. Like last time, if you want to see the contents of the table, we do select all from the table, right? This is how you can see the contents. So what should we do if we want to see the schema? Mm -hmm. You describe the table. And I will show you who is the primary key. Right? Because it's an enrolled table, so it has to consider both the student ID and the course ID. So that's why both are shown as primary key. And for grade, it's okay to be not. So today, I'll show you another one that you can actually see a, a bit more, so you can also see the constraints you have. So what you can do is to show create table, and you put the table name. Okay? So this is what you'll get if you type that. So you type show, create table, enroll, then you'll see this. Okay? So here you can see, here are the fields that we have in the table and who is the primary key, and also what is the engine for this table. Okay? And we don't have any foreign key right, right now, right? So it's not showing anything regarding to the foreign key. So let's say if your engine is not this one, but it's the, um, I think it's the my, my IACM, something like that. If you want to change it, what you can do is, um, you can set the foreign key check to zero first, because you disable this flag. And then what you can do, this is for modifying whatever kind of modification you want to do on the table. So you say you want to enroll, um, alter table enroll, and, oh no, <laughs> no, 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 forget about what I was saying, I was trying to add foreign key. So we want to change the integer for that, right? So you want to alter, so if you want to change the engine, you don't have to do this part, ignore me. But if you want to change the engine, you alter the table, and you put the table name, okay? And you type engine, and you just put the engine of your choice. And we always use this, this part, okay? Yeah, okay? So if you go back to check it this time, it will show you that the engine now is using the right one. Okay? So that's a, just a couple of little things that you want to be careful of. Um, and now we want to add the foreign key. Okay? So for adding the foreign key, you have to start with doing this thing. Okay? So you disable the flag. And what you want to do, so I will go back to the slides to quickly show you. Um, So what we want to do is to add this part. Okay, add this part to the table we created from last time. So 
to do that, we also do um, the button, and you put the table, and put the table name, okay, the one you want to modify. Then you say, I want to add foreign key. Okay, then just type the same thing that you would do for um, setting foreign key when you're creating table. Okay, and here are the um, options that we do for both delete and update. Once you hit enter, you will see that the query is okay, and the rows, four rows that store in the table are affected. Okay, so if you want to see how it looks like right now, you can say show create table, and you put the table name. So this time, the result will be a little bit different. Okay, so you can see. From last time, we only have until here the primary key, but this time it tells you we now have constraints. What is the constraint? The constraints for the foreign key, and then follows the same thing we just typed in. Okay. So just remember by doing um, show create table followed by the table name, that will give you a lot of details for the table. Okay. So now I want you to try out. Few things. If you don't have your laptop with you, team up with someone else or imagine the results. Okay. Oops. Okay. Um, so I, I changed a couple of the IDs. So it's different from the slides, the one I use red, because the one I put on the slides actually is not that interesting. Um, Cut out. So for the part missing, you can look at your slide. Um, but I want you to think about and also try out on your on your computer to see how what what happened when you already set these up, okay? And also following the constraints we just set, what will happen if you try these in order? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, show create table. Oh, 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 yeah. Was that like tied to a certain table or was that in general? In general. So, like for the whole environment, it, by default it's set to one. Okay. And it's like stopping you to add or anything. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you just set it back. Do you guys want to try it out or just want to think about it? <laughs> okay. I don't mind. Um, we don't have to try it out because I, I um, have something for you to practice before the lecture ends. So, what do you think will happen if we, based on this and based on the um, table we created, what will happen if we delete the tuple with student ID 5? Three six five zero. So, what will happen when we update the enroll table as follows? So, the one five three six five zero is here. This one. What do you think will happen if we delete that from the enroll table? Someone say the student table referring to it will be deleted as well? No? Other opinion? Yeah. yeah, actually only the tuple with student ID 53650 in the enroll table will disappear. But the one in student table will stay. Okay. I'll just try out real quick for you. So, um, right here, if you want to do delete, a 
Okay, you click delete from enroll. Okay, and you specify the criteria. So it's where the student ID equals to five three six five zero. Okay. So now if you see um, what are the contents from enroll, you can see the one with five three six five zero is gone, right? Then we look at one from students, and he's still here. Okay, anyone can explain why? Yeah. Does it just like break the the more the relation when that happens? Oh, you mean if I delete it, that break the? When you delete it from involved. Mhm. Mm because it wasn't there are form fees that the other day. Yeah. So. If we just by judging by this design, do you think it's allowed if we want to delete something in a role that's referring to students? Yeah, so that's the, um, so it's a bit tricky if you look at this. You will think, oh, on delete, then cascade. So the student one should disappear as well. But actually, the way to think about it is um, it's referencing to students. And on delete means when the delete on students happen. Then the matching one um, on the enroll cascade. Okay? And here as well, um, on delete, uh, on update, uh, the, when update happens on the students, the matching SID in enroll will have no action. Okay, so that's the tricky part. These things are saying any changes when it happens to the students. So because we don't have the same thing specified in the student's table, right? So we can actually delete from the enroll table. So what do you think will happen if we insert a tuple with student ID like this? Hmm? So do you think it will accept it or? Reject it. Reject it. Why is that? Because parent record doesn't fit this right in the parent table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you mentioned a term. So you can call this the child table and this the parent table, right? This one is referring to it. So um, we guess now that this action will be rejected because is there a student with this ID in the student table? No. Okay. Let's try it out real quick. I think I won't go through all of them. Update into enroll. Okay, this is how you insert things so with values. And let's just say uh, what I want to five, five, three, two, zero, zero. And we just say it's your signage. And got it. Doesn't matter because actually it will. Whoa! <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Why did it happen? Give me a second. Wait. Okay. So. This is weird. This is awkward. It's supposed to be he checked to show. Mm. Anyone can figure out what I did wrong? Let's just say normally it should be rejected. <laughs> I'll fix it and tell you what happened. Okay. Sorry about that. That's really silly. 
warranty check is this warranty check enabled me? Hmm? Warranty check. That foreign Oh, I didn't enable it back, right? Thank you. Foreign key check. Okay. So if I delete it Where I do it again. Yeah, so that's an error. Thank you. <laughs> so remember the environment, the flag that I set it to on to disable it first. I forgot to set it back. Okay. Thank you. So that's what's going to happen if it's set correctly. Okay. okay, now, so for the, the rest, I won't go through it, but you can imagine what will happen. So for the third one, if we update the tuple with student ID 53650 um, to 53666, imagine we didn't do this and it's still there. Do you think we can do that? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Why yes? Because, uh, mm -hmm. because there's not actually no constraint stopping you when you modify the enroll, right? But when modifying the students, that's where we have the foreign key constraints that will stop you to do a, couple, a few things. So how about when we update the tuple with 53831, that one, to 53600? Okay or not? No. No, why not? Because that doesn't exist in the student table. Okay. Okay. Next one, let's look at this. So now we want to modify the student's table instead. Okay. So we want to insert tuple with SID 53600. <coughs> what will happen? No insertion. Hmm? Just normal insertion, right? And nothing will happen on the enroll, right? Just on the student's table. So how about when we delete the tuple with SID 53666? <coughs> what will happen? Yeah. Yeah, because of the cascade, right? Remember, if you recall, when we define the constraints, we have on delete, cascade. So then not only this row will disappear, but also this row. Okay, final one, when we update the tuple with SID 53831 to 53600, what do you think will happen? No action. Hmm? No action, okay, no because we say on update, we define no action, so what will be the result? Do you think it will be accepted or error will show up? There will actually be an error because, like, remember when we define we have, uh, what's it? On update, no action. So it's not allowing you to modify here and then that part will modify. Right? But what if we change it to on update cascade? The entire hierarchy will be on. Mm hmm. Okay. So then when you change it, that power chain. So that's an example. Okay. Any question here? So a few things on query. So right now we have only used select all from table so far, right? We haven't put any criteria. But if you do select all from a table and you put criteria where whatever criteria you want to put, then based on the criteria you will return the results. Okay? So up until now we only use select all. So it will give you the whole row. So all the rows that satisfy the criteria, the um, result will be returned. What if you only want to have a certain field return? Then you can do this. Okay, so if you select and you just put the field name. 
Okay? Then this time it will only return just the name and the locket. I won't try this out. You can just try it out. And remember last time we said we put the, I call it the nickname for the table, so it's actually putting a variable name for the table. Remember why we want to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, unless, the, uh, in case when we have other tables, right, you can make it clearer. And also sometimes two tables, they will have the same field name. So you can specify, oh, this is, this SID is from this table and that SID is from the other table. So here I'll show you, um, for example, sometimes you want to select things from table A, but the criteria is actually based on table, table B. So you can do this. For example, you want to select the name from student table, which is the S, and the course ID from enroll table, which is the E, okay? Where the SID matches the student ID in the enroll table, and also in the enroll table it shows the greatest A. Okay, so this is how you can use the idea of um, combining different tables. Any question here? Not yet, not yet, yeah. That, that's for, yeah, that's for later. But for now, this will work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to move on to see, um, so for now we are only just creating the tables by SQL command, but we actually want to see how you can translate from the ER model to the SQL command. Okay. So you don't have to do this for your project at phase one. But you'll be doing this in um, homework two and phase two of your project. Okay, so this so far is still very easy, right? When you see an ER model like this, if we just have a very simple entity set right here, it's very intuitive to directly translate it to this, right? Should be easy. Okay, you just put the um, whatever attribute you have and say, out of all these attributes, SSN is the primary key. Okay, so you can simply map this to that. So entity is easy. How about um, relationship set? So we consider this a little bit complicated relationship set. We we'll call the works in two because remember, I think in chapter two we have so many different type of works in. So this is works in two. So when translating a relationship set to a relation, which is a table, attributes of the relation must include two parts. The first part is the keys for each participating entity, entity set. So what will we call it? If we just put all the keys for each participating entity set. So for works in, all the keys are there are super key. Why is it super key and not candidate key? One of the key members. Yeah. So that's why we call it the super key. And other than that, um, here we also include the descriptive attributes. So if you have other attributes just for this relationship set, then you will also include it into your design. Okay. So you can refer to this ER diagram and in the next slide, this is how we can create um, the table for works in two relationship set. Okay. So as you see, we have SSN um, department ID in the address from the location down there, the entity set, the location. And I think I was missing since the attributes, so you can draw it on the relationship, okay? I was missing the since. You can declare it as a date type. So, what will the primary key be for a work in two? Did you say it 
address it more in one episode. Yeah. So for now, we, we just say, yeah. Um, yeah. So you put three of them together as the primary. Okay. Basically, all the foreign keys that are relation, shape, like relation or relationship, mm -hmm. will be the primary key of that. Mm, right now, it's the case, but we will talk about different situations later when we have different kind of constraints. Yeah, but for now, because as you can see, we didn't specify any key constraints or participating constraints. So you just simply put all of the primary key from all the participating um, entity sets. Okay, and then this part is easy, right? For the foreign key of SSN, where does it come from? It comes from the SSN in employees. Okay, and so on. Same thing. How about if you remember this example where we want to translate an entity set like this, where the relationship set only involves one entity set? It's kind of cutting out here. But. Okay, so here, for the same relationship, it will refer, let's say, for one relationship of reports to, it will refer to two employees, right? And one is the supervisor, one is the subordinate. So here we will have the SSN for supervisor and the SSN for subordinate. Here should be fine, right? No problem. Then how would you specify the primary key? Also, just put them both together. So, yeah, this is actually very simple, but I didn't want you to fill that out. So what were the first references to? Employees, and the second one? <laughs> Just want to put that in your head. <laughs> so it's referring to the same entity set. Okay, so so far we have not yet considered any kind of constraints. Okay. So let's take a look when we actually have some constraints. Okay, let's review a little bit. This is not a thick line, and it's an arrow. So we will say, for each department, there is what employee managing it? One or at most one, right? At most one. So, is it okay for a department to not be managed by any employee? Yeah. Yeah. And is it okay for an employee to manage more than one department? Oh, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's a yes. So that yes is. So for manager's relationship, for that relationship, based on what we just figured out, for employee to department, it's a what to what relationship. As I said, one employee can manage more than one. So if we think of it another way, it means when we have a department, at most it will only have one employee managing it, right? So when you have a department, you don't have to worry about maybe there will be multiple employees associating it regarding to the manager's relationship. So we have two options for creating this relationship set. The first one is like this. Okay, you just simply put both the primary keys from both sides, the SSN and the DID. Did I have a sense? I forgot, maybe. <laughs> On the um, manager's relationship sense. So what should the primary key be? What do you think? Do you think it's necessary for us to take both? Both the SSN and the ID? Someone's shaking their head. So if no, why? Mm -hmm. So they will be uniquely identified by the employee Yeah, exactly. So I put the line super long, but just just the ID. Okay, so we, um, this is because, like you said, when we already find a department, there will only be one DID that's managing it when you're thinking about the management relationship. The very important management departments, right? Yeah. And how do you identify those? Oh, oh then. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, so if we already have this, we can actually put it further. We can just simply merge the whole uh, manager concept into the table where we call it the department manager. So here are actually the attributes for the department. Right? And we just simply say for the foreign key, SSN, the references, the employees, SSN. Right? So you actually have, you, you can have one less table. You don't have to have the managers. That's what will happen when we have a key constraint. Okay? So other than key constraints, what is the other constraint that we have learned? Participation constraint. So let's look at this. It looks a bit crazy. Um, these two are, th uh, these three are thick lines. So for every DID value in department's table must appear in a row of manager's table with a non-normal SSN value. Okay, so if we think about for each department, how many employees can they have to manage it? Exactly. Exactly one, right? Because it's a thick line in arrow. How about for each department, if we consider the works in, then what is it? At least one. Yeah, <laughs> at least one, right? For each department, there is at least one employee working in it. Yeah, and the other way around, which is for um, each employee, he should work in for at least one department, okay? So that's for this decline. No problem? So how will we translate that? Uh, So if we look at uh, the managing, yeah, the managing relationship, okay? So these should be obvious, but the thing I want to ask you is, now we have a foreign key, which is the SSN of the employee. What other things should we specify? If you take a look at So if we, let's say, okay, thinking about a department when it's the managing relationship, if we delete the employee that's managing it, what do you think should happen? The, the employee is managing a certain department and we delete the employee that's managing it? But then the department will have no. There should be an error, right? So instead of doing delete, what will happen if you want to change the manager for a department? You have to update. Yeah, you can just do update, right? Because if you allow the situation when it can be deleted, then this will not satisfy. Okay? So what should we do if we want to avoid the delete? We should put on delete. No action. Mm -hmm. So you should put on delete no action. The entire department is gone. Then in that case, I mean, the entire. For example, the organization sacked the entire department. Then there is no manager and there is no department, right? Yeah. So how do we catch the gap? Oh, you mean if the department is gone? I mean, if we delete the manager, then how did it cascade with the delete the person in the department? Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if we use that on delete no action. Um, yeah, this is preventing the situation where to have the department missing manager. Yeah. Yeah. 
it will give you error saying you cannot just directly delete that. If you, okay, let's say if that employee is leaving and not working anymore, then what you should do is to replace a manager to the manager's relationship first. So then you can delete whatever, whoever you want to delete. But if you allow the case to have the manager's relationship to be gone, even temporarily, then that will break the constraint where we say for each department there should be exactly one employee. Mm -hmm. All the time, you will be exact one. Okay, so let's take a look at what would happen for weak entity. Okay. So for weak entity, if we recall, um, let's ignore this part first. Weak entity set only got a partial key, right? The partial key is um, denoted by the dash line, and uh, need to take the key of owner entity, right? Employee is the owner to entity. So to identify which dependent it is, not only does it have to look at the P name, but it also has to look at the primary key of the employee. Okay. So what will happen when the owner entity, which is, we say the identifying entity, is deleted? <laughs> You're so fast, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dependent will be gone as well, right? Okay, and then that's, that's the exact mapping of the concept. So, remember one really important thing is when we design the weak entity, we will put the dependent, oh, okay, the weak entity and the relationship associating with it in the same table. Anyone can answer why? Why we only need the same table instead of having an employee table, policy table, and a dependent table? Yeah, so then you can not only have like a dependent table there, right? Can you? No. So, how would you translate that? Let's say we want to do the dependent and policy table, okay? So we have the dependent name, dependent H, and the cost of the policy in the SSN of the identifying owner. What are the primary keys? Yes. Yeah. SSN and PA. Okay? So for foreign key SSN referencing to the employees, we said earlier if the weak entity is deleted, oh no, no, no. If the employee, the identifying owner is deleted, which is from the employee table, right? Then the weak entity should also be deleted as well. So this is on delete. Okay. So now we have five minutes left. And I want you to think about, I haven't talked about the is a hierarchy. I'll see whether we have time next Monday or quickly talk over it. Um, because next week I want to move on to chapter 4, which is a crazy chapter. Mm, okay, so before I finish, we want to, I want to use the five minutes for you to think about how you would design this. 
You can either try it out on your MySQL shell or just write it down. Discuss with your classmates, okay? <laughs> I actually put a very um, simple data set just on Angel that you can see what will happen. Okay, so when you look at this, what are the tables you think you should create? Which one is obvious that we will have the table for it? Employees and policies. Which is a dependence. Oh, yeah, dependence with the beneficiary. Do we have to have a purchase? No. Yeah, no. So firm, yeah. No, we don't have to have it, right? Why? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So to finalize what how many tables do we need? Three, which are the employee, policy, independent. Yes. Think of how think about how you would design it and then it has to specify uh, has to satisfy all of the key constraints and participants. in terms of doing things in MySQL or getting things working on your MySQL account, MySQL shell, make sure you can get it work because for your homework too, you will actually have to do those things. You will have to type in the comments and I will ask you to provide the results you have, the return results with your comments. So you want to make sure you can get it work. Uh, I don't care whether it's on your local machine or anything. So if you still have problems setting it up, you can let me help you out or the TA. Yeah, you're free to go. <laughs> I feel like you guys can't wait to leave. Um.